Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. And today I wanted to, to share a, a, a conversation I had with a client. And we were talking about a situation they were in. And it was a, a situation that when they described it to me, even, even I, even Michael Neal, I did. I found I, I was a little daunted. I was like, wow, that, that, that sounds kind of difficult. And, and I was kind of stuck in their reality. In, in the difficulty of the way they were thinking about what was going on for them until they asked me a question. And the question they asked me was, what should I do? And in that moment, I heard that question so clearly as one of the worst questions you could possibly ask yourself or anyone about anything. And so what the, the dialogue my client and I had was about why that is. And the, and the first problem with what should I do as a question is it assumes that action is the solution, right? That there is something that I can do that will change things. Now, sometimes that will be true, but sometimes there's nothing for you to do. Sometimes what's going to move the needle, what's going to change things is a new seeing, is a new understanding, is a, a, a new kind of clarity, is seeing things from a, a different place. So I remember at one point I wanted to uh, reach, my, my financial goal was to reach last year's income level within the first three months of this year. And this was a few years back, but but like, and I was I was determined that I was going to make it happen, and and I had my kind of kept coming up with my actions to do it. But at some point, it 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 occurred to me, man, I am working way too hard here. Like this, may, this doesn't make sense. I know enough from my life that when I'm working that hard at something, something is off. And what I saw was, oh, the reason I even have this goal is because I think making money is repugnant. Like, I think it's such an awful thing to have to do that I want to get it over with so that I can just enjoy the rest of my life. Now, when I saw that, I thought, well, that's made up. Right? There's nothing inherently pugnant or repugnant. I don't know if pugnant is a word, but there's nothing inherently anything about making money. It's If you do it in an awful way, it'll be awful. If you do it in a fun way, it'll be fun. So when I saw that, the whole situation resolved itself. And I very naturally found a very natural rhythm around making money for the year that made it fun and, and there was no rush. And because there was no rush, there was no pressure. And because there was no pressure, I was a lot more creative. And because I was a lot more creative, I got there a lot quicker. So the solution wasn't in what I did, though I did stuff. It was in seeing. Now, the second problem with the question, what should I do, is should. Right? There's a lot of people who have written about this. The psychologist uh, Karen Horney uh, wrote the, about the tyranny of the shoulds, how people torture themselves with what they think they should do. Albert Ellis, the founder of Rational Emotive Therapy, used to talk about autism, spelled O-U-G-H-T, autism, and masturbation. Like, you know, I must, and you drive yourself crazy with all these oughts and musts and shoulds. But fundamentally, the problem with should is it suggests that there is a particular right answer. Now, in math and science, there often is a particular right answer. But in the art of living, there, there's no right answers. There are principles underlying art. But art itself is individual. So when you look to the should, you're, you're trying to treat art as science. You're trying to turn a blank canvas into a paint by numbers picture. And no matter how good you get at coloring within the lines of a paint-by-numbers picture, it's not really art. And no matter how messy the first canvas you fill, it's the beginnings of art. And the more canvases you fill, and the more interested you are in learning, the more beautiful your art will become. Now, the third problem with the question, what should I do, is I. 
Because the intimation is that if it's to be, it's up to me. I wish I had a rhyming one with for, you know, if it's true, it's up to you. I, I don't know what the other one would be. But we think that it is all on us. And the problem with that is that in many ways, the us that we think is responsible for it doesn't even exist except as an idea in our mind. The Canadian mystic Wei Wu Wei said, why are you unhappy? Because 99.9% .9 of everything you think and of everything you do is for yourself. And there isn't one. As long as there is a you doing or not doing, thinking or not thinking, meditating or not meditating, you are no closer to home than the day you were born. Play your part in the comedy, but don't identify yourself with your role. So when we see that A, it, it's not really down to doing to move the needle because a different seeing will naturally produce a different doing. That the whole idea that there's an answer to any question that has should in it is based on a misunderstanding of art, a confusion between art and science, and is based on a misperception of who's living your life, some separate character that's been created along the way, or life itself. Have fun, learn heaps, and happy exploring. I'll talk with you soon.